Welcome everybody. We're gradually grinding through uh, all of the gremlins. G'day John. Hello Peter. Evening Brad. Trevor, Glenn. I think we're going to be alright tonight. The uh, stream seemed like it worked okay earlier so touch wood we still haven't got everything sorted with uh, Telstra and the NBN yet but it is looking better. G'day Kim, how are you going? Neville, welcome. Lots of people starting to come in on the stream, that's great news. Hi Carissa. Tony, welcome. Shane, good to see you on the feed. Ian, thanks for uh, joining. Lots and lots of people coming on the feed there. It's uh, getting close to start time. Hopefully uh, everything is going to run like a dream this evening. And maybe we'll get through the whole uh, show without uh, it falling, the wheels falling off. Coffee Boys Kid, hello. Tyler, good to see you in the feed as well. Andrew, Walter, lots and lots of people coming on board, both on Facebook and YouTube. We've got a fantastic show coming up tonight. Lots and lots of informative stuff, some great interviews and things with some people. I'm sure you'll all uh, should learn uh, quite a bit over the uh, over the the show tonight. And I think uh, we've probably just about got ourselves nearly uh, set and ready. Only a couple of minutes now. It looks like we're about to uh, hit the go button. And welcome to the Mind Lab Show, Australia's most informative prospecting live stream. This is a place where you'll get all the tips, tricks and super deals you need for your next gold prospecting or treasure hunting adventure. Stay tuned and check out another informative segment with the Coffee Bush Kid, all the happenings around the gold fields in prospecting and treasure hunting news, a handy tech tip from Nathan, and we'll visit another gold hotspot. There's some super live viewer giveaways and much, much more. I'm Gold Digger Dave. Let's get digging. There's nothing like the sound of gold under the coil when I'm out there swinging my detector. That signal's so sweet when I hear that beep beep. Couldn't think of many things better. There's nothing like the sound of gold under the coil when I'm out there swinging my detector. Well, let's start off as we usually do with a bit of a look at the gold price and we can see it's dropped slightly over the past week or uh, past week or so and it's evened out somewhere around about the $2,670, $2,700 per troy ounce. However, the price of gold is still tipped to rise over the coming year and it's well up on its price at the beginning of 2022. Only time will tell exactly where the price of gold will go over the next few months and many analysts predict that the price still to rise with some even suggesting that the price could break through the $3,000 mark per troy ounce. As always, we'll keep you posted with our weekly updates on the MindLab show. Now, we've got the Mine Lab Metal Detector Demo Days coming up. Again, they're back on again now. It's, uh, I think this is the second lot that we've uh, started to run. Um, so what are they? Uh, they're exclusive to Miners Den, the Mine Lab Experts. And it's on this Saturday, March the 10th, 19th, starting at 10 a.m. So if you've ever wondered how you might uh, get started in gold prospecting hobby or uh, treasure hunting, then look no further. The Miners Den Mine Lab Metal Detector Demo Days will get you sorted. Specifically designed to give you an in-depth look at what type of equipment you might need and at what price point. You'll get to feel the weight and hear some of the machines in operation. 
You can chat with the experienced prospectors who run the demo days and be sure that you invest your hard earned in the correct piece of equipment for your needs. You'll get to hear about a large range of accessories that you can pair with your equipment. And to top it all off, we'll even throw a sausage on the barbecue for lunch. Um, additional bonus items will be thrown in uh, with all the detector purchases on the day. It started many people off on a rewarding prospecting adventure. Miners Den Australia, the Mine Lab experts. To book, simply call one of the Miners Den stores and we'll book you in. Uh, we just need to know if you're coming along. It helps us uh, with the catering arrangements and things. So even if you uh, make a last minute decision, just uh, give the store a buzz and say, hey, can we drop in? And uh, we'll make sure we've got some room for you there and a sausage reserved on the barbie for you. And look, uh, I'm not sure I mentioned it, but uh, these are free for people to attend. Now, we do also just got off the Great Outdoor and 4x4 Expo at Mornington last weekend. Uh, we were down there uh, all weekend, and what a show it was. It's the first show that we've been able to do for a little while, and it was well attended. Outdoor enthusiasts learned a little more about the Mind Lab range of detectors, and those who brought at the show enjoyed some of the sharpest pricing in Australia. We're also advantaged to they're also able to take advantage of the impromptu training on site to help them get their gold prospecting and treasure hunting adventures off to a great start. Those that I took out with the Equinox uh, 800, uh, certainly they were able to ping some goldies, one and two dollar coins, before we even left the site and uh, that was a, a great sign and uh, we could see all of those people having a lot of fun and turning this into a rewarding and profitable treasure hunting hobby. It was a great to catch up with many familiar faces and there's a big thank you goes out to Mind Lab's technical representative Brad who was uh, on the stand to uh, answer any of those curly questions that uh, people like to ask. Uh, great weekend to have by all and I'm really looking forward to our next expo. So the next time we'll be exhibiting at an expo will be the Victorian Caravan and Camping Touring Show. Uh, this uh, is next on our schedule and it's happening uh, from Wednesday the 6th of April through to Sunday the 10th of April 2022 at the Melbourne Showgrounds. If you want to find out more about a fun, uh, the fun and rewards that can be yours from the hobby of gold prospecting and treasure hunting, be sure to mark this one down as a must do. Australia's Mine Lab experts will be on hand uh, to help you to correct the pe guide, help guide you to the correct piece of mine lab equipment for your needs and uh, we'll also get it to you at the sharpest deals in the country. And this is right across the whole range of mine lab's world leading metal detectors. Of course, you'll also be able to have a chat with the mine lab representatives on the stand. So there's more details to come on that uh, in the next uh, week or so there for you. Miners Den uh, has also got their certified training sessions on. And there's some sessions uh, that are coming up on March the 26th, that's Saturday, March the 26th, and Sunday, uh, March the 27th in Bendigo. So all you need to do is you've just got to head across to minersden.com, select your preferred session and time, give the local store a call, and we'll get you all booked in. Now look, if you purchase through a Miners Den uh, Mine Lab Metal Detector Superstore, then this is free for the SDC 2300, the GPX 6000 and 5000, and of course the GPZ 7000. There are a few spots uh, left in all the sessions, so just call and we'll get you sorted and out getting some of the best training that Australia has to offer on the Mine Lab machines. If not, you didn't purchase from us, look, there'll be a small fee, but you can still have the benefit of Australia's only certified Mine Lab training courses for the mid to high end Mine Lab metal detectors. Of course, I mentioned last week we we're over in uh, Adelaide uh, trying to giving a hand uh, to the guys over there, uh, Paul and Diane, to move to our new location. Our new location is 29 Sir Donald Bradman Drive in Mile End South. Paul and Diane have done a great job in getting the uh, store set up and uh, we'll soon have some signage up uh, to help you find the store. 
here's a few pics of what it's looking uh, like now. So um, we had the store there, we've put some new counters and things in. We've got a lot more wall space, and a lot more space full stop uh, in the store this time. It's starting to look like it's well stocked uh, with everything that we need for your gold prospecting or treasure hunting adventures. Whether you just need to pick up the panning kit or whether you need to get some of the gourmet pay dirt, we've got it all there in uh, Adelaide. And uh, once we get to a few more hooks and things to get it up on the walls, uh, the store will be, well, it's open now and it's all ready to go. Uh, that's just a little sneak peek inside. Now, unfortunately, the signage hasn't gone up as yet, but that won't be uh, too far away. Um, so that's uh, a very good job. Thank you to the team over in Adelaide for, for getting us sorted there. And uh, I'm sure they are looking forward to seeing you in the store shortly. So now we're going to have a look at what we're going to do for uh, tonight's giveaways. Um, decided to mix things up and uh, a little bit different this time with our live viewer giveaway. During this episode, I'm going to be giving away uh, random prizes every five minutes or so. There will be one uh, for our Facebook viewers as well as those who are watching the YouTube stream. Uh, as I said, very, very simple. To be in with a chance of winning, all you need to do, let us know you're watching. Okay, you can simply post a comment, a question, or a suggestion while the show is live, uh, and I'll announce the winners throughout the show. So I've got the first couple up here. Uh, uh, we've got the couple of red sand scoops that we're going to give away this time. Uh, so the first win there on Facebook, uh, Jeanette Fox, congratulations, you've got one of those. And on YouTube, Joanna Paulson, I think I've spelt that, uh, pronounced that correctly there. You've also won yourself a red sand scoop, courtesy of the Miners Den. If you can just let Corey uh, know in the feed and uh, your, your addresses and details just through a, a PM or a DM or whatever we call them these days, and Will will get your prizes out to you very shortly. Good luck and happy prospecting. Now look, it's uh, time next uh, to come up for uh, our uh, tech tip with Nathan. And this time Nathan's going to show us how to replace the pressure blocks on the Vanquish series metal detectors. G'day, I'm Nathan from Miners Den Authorised Service Centre and today I'm going to show you how to replace a cam lock and rubber pressure block on a Vanquish series detector. So, firstly, you'll need a few tools, you'll need a hammer, you might need a pair of pointy nose pliers, a hole punch and a replacement cam lock pressure block and a uh, pin for it as well. So what you'll need to do is you'll need to replace this lock here. So sometimes the shaft can come loose and it will keep retracting. So to fix this is we'll replace the, um, the pressure block. So what we'll do, grab the pin and the hammer and just tap it out. Should be quite easy. Like so. Nothing to it. Take the old cam lock out, take the pin there. That's the old set. What you might need to do is you'll have to pull out the rubber Bosch block, rubber, rubber pressure block, just be careful. There we go, pull him out. It's the old one. Now, the new one, you'll have to push it in and sort of slide it into a little slot here at the back, like so, and then push it down, and then you can just put the old cam lock in. Pushes it all to your thumb even. All right, so that's it. That's how you replace a cam lock and a pressure block rubber on a Vanquish series detector. I'm Nathan from Miners Den Authorised Service Centre and this has been a tech tip for the Mine Lab Show. Well, that was another fantastic tip there and uh, we've got some more we're going to film with uh, Nathan on. Uh, just giving you some ideas if you get one of those uh, minor repairs, you can get the parts from uh, Miner's Den in Bendigo. Uh, just give uh, Nathan a call there and uh, or order them online um, and you'll be able to get your machine up and running again. Now we move right along and we're going to come up to uh, our gold uh, stories this time, or treasure stories. Uh, so, it's gold discovery this one. A former deep sea treasure hunter, Tommy Thompson, is preparing to spend his sixth year in jail for refusing to disclose the whereabouts of 500 missing coins made from gold found in a historic shipwreck. Thompson's case dates to his discovery of the SS Central America, known as the Ship of Gold, in 1988. The Gold Rush era ship sank in a hurricane off the South Carolina in 1857 with thousands of pounds of gold aboard. 
Thompson says he's already said everything he knows about the coins. And Thompson pleaded guilty in April 2015 for his failure to appear for a 2012 hearing and was sentenced to two years in prison and a $250,000 fine. But Thompson's criminal sentence has been delayed until the issue of the gold coins is resolved. The US mail ship SS Central America, which sank after sailing into a hurricane in September 1857, in one, in one of the worst maritime disasters in American history. 425 people were killed and thousands of pounds of gold sank with it to the bottom of the ocean. Thompson maintains he doesn't know the location of the 500 missing coins and it looks like he's going to be spending more time behind the bars while the court uh, waits for him to remember where he stashed the gold coins. That was an interesting story. The next gold story uh, is about a miner of Glasgow Resources who discovered multiple high-grade intercepts from an exceptional drill hole in its Gilby's North prospect within the Delagarnera Gold Prospect in WA. Now, I think I'm saying it right. It's Delagarnera or something along those lines. It's a little hard to pronounce that one. Has already produced over 33 ounces, uh, 33,000 ounces of gold in the first half of uh, the 2022 financial year. The latest drilling exploration returned 56 metres of gold mineralisation across four intercepts. The most significant totaled 23 metres at 3.8 grams per tonne, uh, for, uh, and another one uh, with 13 metres, including four metres that went uh, 11.3 grams per tonne. According to Gascoigne CEO Simon Lawson, the remarkable drill result is a potential game changer for this emerging gold discovery. He said, we have now intersected thick gold mineralisation from the surface across multiple lenses and of materially higher grade material than currently being mined from Gilby's main pit. It certainly looks like the potential uh, for a very profitable uh, time ahead for the investors in Gascoigne and the Delagara Gold Project. Okay, well now just before we move right along again, I've got another couple of um, uh, prizes here to look out at. This time I have my uh, finds pouches here. So I'm gonna give a couple of these away. Uh, one of those uh, for Facebook, Joan Costa, congratulations Joan, you've got uh, that one there. And there's also one there for YouTube for Francis Wright. Now just remember guys, we've got a lot of prizes tonight. Let Corey know uh, with a PM or a DM your details. And if you wanna pick it up or have it posted out, uh, and uh, we'll get those prizes away to you very, very quickly. Now, I will get a little bit behind when I'm doing some of these, so if I come to a long segment, I may do a couple in a row. That's the uh, finds pouches. That's courtesy of MindLab. Thank you very much uh, to those guys as well. And we will move right along again. Uh, and this time, we're going to do a quick tip uh, from the Coffee Bush Kid on how to pinpoint with the inbuilt pinpointer on the Equinox 800. G'day folks, I'm the Coffee Bush Kid and today we're going to show you how to use the pinpoint feature on the Equinox 800. When you come across a target in the ground and you want to identify where it is exactly so that you can dig it out precisely without making a massive crater, you can use the pinpoint function on the Equinox. It's as simple as pushing the button, you hear that noise? And that's right where our target is. And uh, we'll have a look at the dashboard and see how, how it all looks there. You can see down there where our coin is. You can hear that we've found it. But if we press the pinpoint button, hear that? Just a short burst. And you see these target areas there? how they come up, when they join in the middle, like that, yeah, we're, they're telling us <laughs> that we are in fact right on it. Just like that. You can hear that we're right on it. And of course the coil was in fact right on it. In not using the pinpoint function on the Equinox 800, you can just use your coil tip and then coming around 90 degrees 
you can figure out where it is by, as they say, drawing imaginary lines on the ground. But the pinpoint function is just a really nice quick way of finding out where something is. So that is how to use your pinpoint function on the Equinox 800. I'm the Coffee Bush Kid, and that's been a quick tip for the Mind Lab Show. Well, another uh, great segment there from the Coffee Boys Kid. Uh, let's uh, have a quick look here. I'm going to give away a couple more prizes here. Look, we've got the our green scoops, so you won't see that now. Looks quite good there, actually. There we go. It's a, a transparent uh, scoop. Uh, great idea to get, get green, but uh, uh, one each of those. So it's just for putting your little finds in, sorting your uh, material out with. Um, Facebook, Ian, Can Ian Cans. Uh, congratulations, Ian. You've uh, scored yourself one of those. And Alicia. Uh, Goonan. I think I pronounced that correctly there, Alicia, on YouTube. Uh, congratulations, guys, once again. Let uh, Corey know in the feed, and we'll get those out to you uh, very, very quickly. So, uh, for those of you who have been watching the show for a while now, you'll know this is a place where the Miners Den Mine Lab Metal Detector Superstores release Australia's best deals on the range of Mine Lab uh, metal detectors. Now, we still have a few of our uh, GPX uh, 6,000 ultimate bundle deals left in stock, but they are selling fast. Now, just to clarify, this offer again saves you a packet on a new MineLab GPX 6000. For $1 extra, Miners Den uh, MineLab Metal Detector Superstores, that's in Adelaide, in Bendigo, in Melbourne, and in Penrith, are throwing in an additional coil, a 17 inch coil, with every 6,000 sold uh, in March or while stocks last. So for eight grand, uh, one dollar, you basically uh, get yourself uh, $525 worth of coil when you buy a new 6,000 through a Miners Den store. Now these numbers are strictly uh, limited. Um, there's first in best thrift. There's no lay buys or rain checks on this offer. Not only that, uh, to kick off the 2022 season, we've also decided to supercharge the offer that uh, we had with the SDC 2300. So it comes now with MindLab's offer. It's coming now with a, uh, a battery pack, a spare battery pack, uh, lithium one included, and a carry bag. Now, Australia's largest certified mine lab dealer, Miners Den Australia, has supercharged this offer by throwing in a pro swing harness, $149 worth of value for nothing. Uh, and don't forget that in every SDC 2300, we now include uh, Miners Den patch lead standard in the box. So you don't even have to ask for the patch lead, it's always going to be there. So there you have it. Miners Den Australia, Mine Lab Electronics have teamed up once again to get you the sharpest deals in the country. Be quick or you'll miss out. So now uh, moving right along, it's time again to have a look at what's happening with Gold Digger Dave's Gourmet Pay Dirt. So we've had a few photos coming in for our Pay Dirt competition. Um, it's, uh, pay Dirt's actually been flying off the shelves in the last uh, few weeks. And with the rise in the price of gold, each bag now contains more value for your dollars. Uh, Australia's richest Pay Dirt, it's from the Poseidon lead in central Victoria. And we're going to have a look at a couple of images now from uh, our pay dirt photo competition. First up, the photo is from Scott Robinson, who found 0.5 of a gram of gold from his uh, bag of gourmet pay dirt. And also another Scott, Scott uh, Bothorpe, who did very well out of his bag of pay dirt also, uh, that's he had a 950 gram bag of pay dirt there. Uh, so multiple options there for you on the pay dirt. As the price of gold goes up, it just keeps getting better and better for those of you who have purchased a bag or are thinking about purchasing a bag. Uh, thanks to all of those who shared their finds and golden luck to everybody in this month's competition. Okay, again, we're going to have uh, another top tip this time, again coming up from uh, the one and only Coffee Bush Kid, and this is how you can get the best out of your next detecting holiday. G'day folks, I'm the Coffee Bush Kid, and today we're going to talk about detecting while on holidays. So picture the scene, you're driving along, you're on holidays, you've got the van in tow, you've come into a nice little town, and you go, gee, this is pretty nice. Wouldn't mind staying here for a day or two. And you've done no research 
whatsoever as to whether the place is good to detect or not. Well, what would you do? One of the first things I suggest you do is go to the local tourist information centre if they've got one. It'll have all the information about all the activities you can do in the town, but it will also give you a glimpse as to what the town was like in its previous life, whether there was mining activities, whether it was just a farming community, whatever, it will tell you. The next thing you can do too, is hop onto your favorite map app. What I usually do is, you know, you, you do whatever it is on your phone or device, and see if there's any crown land or any sort of land anomalies around the town where you're staying to find out whether you know it's worthwhile swinging around. Another good thing to do in the town is to drop into any historical societies or museums. Always well worth a time spent there and uh, you, know, you can look around, you'll find out what the history of the place is. They'll often have old photographs so you can sort of try and figure out where things were and whether you can, you can go swinging there or not. And another good thing to do, and of course, especially when you start to get hungry, is go to the local pub for a meal. Often, on the walls of the pubs, they will have photos of what it was like in, in the old times. They'll actually probably have street names or locations. Just jot them down. Go out and have a look at them. Another clever thing to do is online search history. My wife's a good one at this. She'll hop on her phone and away we go. She'll be telling me all the information. And you can do the same thing. It'll Again, it'll be like going to the Historical Society, but it'll be online. You might glean some other things. They may even have a map with dot points. Very easy to drive to to see if you can't have a bit of a swing there. Another thing you can do is just go for a drive around the place. Go up all the back streets and around everywhere, you'll see a lot of sites, but you might also see some well, parks, all sorts of things, places where you might be able to go for a swing. And the other thing is while you're driving, I tend to go around the outskirts of the town because what they used to also do back in the 40s, 50s, even into the 60s, is that they would dump their rubbish all around the outskirts of town. And uh, as, as anyone that knows me, knows I'm a bit partial to a little bit of a rubbish dump. So uh, they are well worth a swing. They're usually on ground that no one cares about and you can go your hardest in amongst the trash. The last one, and potentially one of the most important, is ask a local. Most of the time, some of the old locals are quite happy to have a bit of a chin wag with you, and they'll put you right and give you the good oil as to, you know, oh, there was this over there, and there was that over there, and you just never know your luck. You may well score yourself a permission. I'm the Coffee Bush Kid, and it's been a top tip for the Mine Lab Show. Okay, well, look, uh, that was a, another great segment. Thank you again to the Coffee Bush Kid. Uh, now, I'm going to give away some things here. So I've got some gold pans here. I'm going to give away two gold pans now. Uh, if we can, uh, they're the 15-inch MindLab Pro Gold Pan. Uh, on Facebook, uh, Chris Wallace, congratulations, you've scored a pan. On YouTube, Matty Hahn, you've scored a pan also. So that's that one there. That's the big pan out of the way and underneath. And I've done a little pan, a finishing pan as well. I'll get those uh, read out there. Adrian Eltona, congratulations on Facebook. You've scored yourself a, a small pro gold pan. That's a 10 inch one. And on YouTube, Joe Jews, Jurs, J U R S, you've scored one too, Joe. Well done, guys. That's uh, a couple more out of the way there. If we get a long segment, like I said, I might have to do a couple at the uh, same time. Uh, please let Corey know in the Facebook uh, feed or in the YouTube. Uh, messages in there, just send him a DM or a PM or whatever they call those things and we will get your prize out. If you want to go and pick up uh, your prize then look please um, uh, please let us know and you can pick it up from one of the stores if you're close by. 
Now, uh, next up, we're going to have a look at our uh, coin and treasure discoveries. No, we're not. I'm actually going to go back and show you something that uh, is now out again. Uh, I've mentioned these before. These are the Signal Gold Prospecting maps. So I'll do a bit more detail on them in another show. So I've got uh, new maps that are out from Signal. There's the Castlemaine Vaughan map. There's also a Talbot Majorca map. There's an Inglewood Kingower there, which is a new one again. And uh, we have Ballarat Creswick. So there's some uh, new maps uh, into the signal range. If you're wanting to get those, they're available online on minusden.com.au or why not jump into one of the stores, pop in and say hello to the guys. Uh, they're around the stores now. So uh, those are the new titles out in the signal gold maps. Now we're going to get into our uh, coin and treasure discoveries. And this time, a Norfolk metal detectorist in England has uncovered an extremely rare Edward III leopard gold coin that was minted at the Tower of London in 1344. That was a while ago. Uh, the coin was only in circulation for about seven months, making it a very important find. And when it went to auction, it was bought by a private collector for a whopping £174,600. Uh, the detectorist will share the money with the landowner, but will still be left with a, what he describes as a life-changing amount of money. The 23 carat Edward III coin, which features a leopard sitting upright wearing a banner, had a face value of three shillings or 36 silver pennies. The detectorist, no doubt, will be back out detecting with perhaps a brand new detector, looking for another ancient gold coin as soon as he can. What a find. Look, uh, that's uh, the gold coin, uh, well, the treasure news uh, for this segment. Uh, we're now going to have a bit of a look uh, at this week's product spotlight. Uh, and we're going to take a look at the differences between the Equinox 800 and the Vanquish 540. Now, look, this, uh, there's a, there's this week's different having a look at this has got a bit of a reason behind it. There's been a multi-branded dealer claiming that there's not much difference between these two units. Nothing could be further from the truth. The step up from the Vanquish 540 to the Equinox 800 is a significant upgrade in uh, metal detectors. Let's have a look at the two units side by side. Um, we've got both the Vanquish and the Equinox here. I've got one of each of these machines, and I was playing around looking at the different, what the different things they could do and all that kind of stuff. And what I've come up with is this. Both machines have multiple detecting modes. The code is slightly different in each uh, machine. Um, both machines are going to, uh, in their, these are enhanced, these modes, for different circumstances on the ground. Both machines have a multi-IQ technology. Uh, that's been attempted to be copied by other companies who've just not been able to get the performance that MindLab has achieved, even years after MindLab brought this technology to market. They also have low latency Bluetooth audio connection. Now, that's about where the similarities stop. If you're looking for an upgrade to the Equinox 800, then here's the additional benefits you'll get when you step up from uh, a Vanquish range into uh, an Vanquish 540, even up into the Equinox range. You're going to get eight custom search profiles on uh, the machine. You're going to get five individually selectable uh, frequencies. Now, I think that's six now if you do the upgrade. There's selectable target tones. There's additional frequencies for detection of a wider range of objects. There's auto and manual ground balance options. You've got 15 additional sensitivity settings. It's submersible down to three metres. There's additional frequencies, as I said in there, for that wider detection. So I think there's, uh, it uses a different mix of frequencies from what the Vanquish does, giving you a better result and uh, finding more stuff more often. Of course, it's got wireless headphones uh, with it also, and it's got the W8, uh, WM08 wireless unit that uh, will basically convert uh, any of the signals uh, from uh, a, 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 a slow um, transmission to a low latency transmission, so you can plug your bug headphones and things like that in. So whether you own a, a Vanquish or an, Ex, or an Equinox, you have a mind lab and you are well in front of the pack. You have access to a dedicated network of MineLab experts through the Miner's Den MineLab Metal Detector Superstores. You have access to a factory certified service centres across Australia. 
Spare parts are easy to come by in the rare event that you do get a breakdown. And this is an Australian company. It's been designed in Australia uh, for top performance in uh, Australian conditions. Now, there'll be talk about stepping sideways and stepping this way, blah, blah, blah. It is all uh, irrelevant so long as you're using a MindLab machine. Don't step down to an overseas product pretending to have the performance of a MindLab. Time and time again, when machines are released and they say you're going to challenge the mine lab machine, I still see mine lab selling 90, 95% of the metal detectors that are being sold in Australia. Okay, they absolutely dominate the gold and the coin and relic uh, segments uh, right across the globe, but especially in Australia where uh, users go for the Australian made product. Don't get switched over to buying a different product when you're already using a mine lab. You can't beat a mine lab, and that's why all that the miners' den stores sell are mine lab because we know we'd be selling something that just cannot perform up to the same level. Insist on the best. Grab yourself a mine lab. There's mine labs for all ranges and all budgets and that kind of thing. You can also maybe look at picking up a second hand one off uh, our second hand certified second hand uh, uh, website. So insist on the best mine lab. Anything else, guys, really is a compromise. And don't go in uh, wanting to buy a mine lab and have your mind switched over to an inferior overseas uh, product. Uh, mine lab have uh, always been the company that's looked after their customers as best they can in Australia. So I just had to bring that out and uh, let you know it is a step up uh, from a Vanquish to the Equinox 800. Both are brilliant machines depending on what your budget is and uh, you'll certainly uh, uh, see the benefits of working with uh, the technology that mine lab have developed. So, enough on that, look, as uh, many of you have also know, know, late last year I visited MyLab HQ in Adelaide. And while I was there, I got time to sit down, had a chance to sit down with the General Manager of Engineering and Operations, Phil Beck. Let's see what Phil Beck has to say in this next interview. Okay, today I've got with me Phil Beck from MindLab, who is the Global Operations and Engineering Manager for MindLab, the world's best metal detector company. G'day, Phil, how are you going? G'day, Dave, no worries. Okay, so you've been around MindLab, the company, for quite a while. How did your journey begin? Yes, yeah, so I started in 98. I came into to MindLab at that stage uh, developing a countermine product, so a landmine detector that was built on a, uh, a vehicle-mounted array system, a huge system. And that was my introduction to metal detection. Okay, and then it's obviously from there you've been able to improve the products uh, with your, your engineering team and uh, build up uh, well, what is quite literally the world's best gold prospecting uh, technologies. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. We've come from a time where we were creating small numbers of machines, small numbers of a small number of machines, to now where we've got quite a wide range and sell you know, tens of thousands of, of detectors every month. Okay, the latest product that you've got out at the moment is the GPX 6000. Now, the technology in that machine obviously differs from your previous uh, um, GPX. Just how did it differ from, say, the, the 4000 or the 45? Um, you put some new bits and pieces in there. Oh, absolutely. And, I mean, you can just see that. You pick the machine up and it's so light. The GPX 6000 is so light to start with. You then turn it on and it's so simple to use. And all of that comes through the technology that uh, is embedded in the product. Yep. Uh, we've got Geosense PI in yep. the, the GPX 6000, which is constantly monitoring the ground. It's looking for electromagnetic interference in the air. Uh, it's, it's monitoring the Earth's magnetic field, so it's optimising the detector for you. So the GPX 6000 is actually, it's, it's our best performing small gold detector, yep. but it doesn't miss those bigger nuggets as well. So you've got the properties of the STC 2300 on the small nuggets, yes. and then the properties of the GPX 5000 on the larger nuggets, yep. all bundled into one package. Yeah, well, we've seen to find that because on the small stuff, I've been going back over ground, it was absolutely flogged and um, uh, finding more targets off there. You just can't believe that the targets have been left there. Oh, absolutely. Um, I also noticed uh, when we're using, say, a 14 inch coil, as opposed to, say, your 11-inch coil, um, that there doesn't seem to be a lot of difference in the sensitivity to small targets, whereas previously I used to find that the double Ds weren't quite as sensitive on the small stuff, but uh, is something you changed there that's improved that? Uh, no, we specifically designed that 14-inch coil so that it was going to get similar depth to the 11-inch coil, yep. uh, yet remove all of the electromagnetic interference. 
Okay, so the bigger coil uh, helped compensate for some of the, the things that you've got, uh, the magic that you've got in there that uh, uh, makes it run nice and smooth. Yeah, plus we have that double D coil operating in a uh, like a figure eight mode, a cancel mode, yes. if you like, from the, the 4500, 5000. So it's got very good um, shallow depth sensitivity. Uh, which okay. is where you're going to find all those small nuggets as well. Exactly, and I guess that's the majority of the gold that's uh, out in any gold fields and always has been. Yes. Um, and that's why we're just seeing multiple people coming in with more targets. Uh, I know my parents were in Western Australia. They dug a 1,090 pieces with the 6,000s over ground that they'd uh, trashed with uh, previous models. And their comment was, I'm seeing this a little bit now, that there's, uh, even though some of the bigger gold off their patches that they're reworking are gone, they're actually getting more gold on average per day, uh, just picking up the small stuff and Absolutely. didn't have to dig too deep. There's a lot more small gold out there. And you're right, you're not digging these, That's right. these really deep holes. So uh, yeah, there's a lot of small gold out there, a lot of small gold still available for everyone to pick up. And that's where the 6,000 really excels. Absolutely. Now, Mine Lab are one of the only companies in the industry that are actually spending uh, dollars on developing new technologies and products and things. Just as a ballpark, how much do you think Mine Lab would spend, say, in a year on developing uh, uh, new products for prospectors and coin and relic hunters? So we spend you know, well north of, of $10 million. We've got a team of more than 70 people in our R&D team. So we keep them pretty busy. And so they, that'd be um, engineers and uh, physicists and... Uh... Absolutely. So we've got more than half a dozen PhDs, for example, yep. uh, spreading across physics, electronics and signal processing. And then we've got teams of electronic engineers, mechanical engineers, software engineers, uh, and again, signal processing and, and physics. Um, majors as well. Okay, you know, it seems that uh, there's the technologies and uh, there's all the other bits you just talked about that uh, go into making a good machine. It's not just having something and saying, oh, this is simultaneous multi-frequency. It's all uh, the other bits and pieces that really finish the product off and make it so that you're, you're the one that's uh, leading it and finding more targets. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you've got to come up with a concept first and then prove that concept's going to work. Then you've got to, to make it work in the field for you know, tens of thousands of operators in places as diverse as down at the beach here in Adelaide, uh, out in a, a field in the middle of the UK, for example. Such a huge variety of conditions. Uh, and then you've got to get it into production, you've got to get the packaging right and all of those things. So yeah, there's a lot of elements that go into to creating a product and putting it out into the market. Absolutely. So uh, on a time frame, do you have a time frame that it usually takes you to deliver a product or what was the longest time frame you would have spent working on one? Yeah, there's, there's no usual, um, but from concept to a physical product in the market can take as much as 10 years. GPZ, for example, from when we first started playing with that technology, um, when Bruce was first um, first dealing with it, it took 10 years. Yep. Uh, some of our more recent products, um, for example, our multi-IQ, we were playing with that, or at least six, seven years ago, was the, the initial versions of multi-IQ. Yep, and that's the simultaneous uh, multi-frequency technology. Now, um, you do see others claiming to have this kind of technology, but it's not in the market. Uh, because of that research and development that MineLab has done, we know that sticking with the tried and tested methods that uh, MineLab have always produced machines with tend to produce the best results anywhere in the world. Absolutely. You know, when we put out a multi-frequency machine, we're making really good use of those multiple frequencies. Uh, it's relatively easy and there's, there's a history of multiple frequency machines in the market, but they were just going to sort of level one of using those multiple frequencies to say balance out salt or remove ground balance. We've gone the extra step, we're using more frequencies, we can get really stable IDs on top of removing that salt signal, on top of removing that ground signal. So yeah, there's a lot of signal processing in there. A lot of those work from the PhDs yep. uh, to make all of that sing properly. Now, the, the million dollar question I've obviously got, um, uh, has MineLab gone as far as it can with technologies or could uh, coin and relic hunters and gold prospectors expect uh, new innovations that will help them obviously get more gold and find more goodies? No, we've got, we've got ideas for all sorts of things from add-on technologies to, to things that we, exist, we currently do to sort of brand new technologies, completely different to what's out there. Uh, all, all sorts of ideas in the hopper that are just waiting to come through into products at some stage. Yeah, well, we see uh, in Australia, uh, obviously, you're the, the leading brand in the market. I think you might hold 80, 90% of the market or something like that. Um, if you're out uh, and wanting to find things, having that latest technology means the whole ground has been opened up again because you can go down that little bit deeper or uh, you can pick up the target a little bit easier. 
Absolutely. Um, that's come all the way through from uh, your work and uh, your team uh, yep. going through. Yep, we only do well when our do well when our customers find more gold. That's that's the aim in Australia, more gold. Fantastic. It's been great having a chat, Phil. Um, let's wait for the next lot of technology to come out. No worries. Thanks, Dave. All right, that was a great interview uh, there with Phil, a very, very interesting uh, man to talk to. And he knows the Mine Lab engineering uh, and operations side of it inside out. So uh, thanks again for, for doing that interview, Phil. Uh, really, really appreciate it. Um, let's see, I've got prizes everywhere here. Let's uh, go down here. A classifier this time we're going to give away. So um, I've got Jason Richards on Facebook. You've scored yourself a Mind Lab uh, classifier. Uh, I've also got uh, a Jacko's Life on YouTube. There's uh, one of those for you also. So just go and jump on and let Corey know. Uh, a couple of, uh, well, there's a couple of backpacks this time that I've got here as well. So these are the, the Mind Lab backpacks. And thank you, Mind Lab, again for your support with the prizes and things. Uh, on Facebook, we've got John Sullivan. Uh, congratulations, John. You're getting this backpack or a backpack coming your way. And uh, Bill uh, Piazza, I think it is, uh, on YouTube. at uh, P-I-Z-Z-A-Z. -Z uh, YouTube, Bill, you've scored one of those there. Back under there for that lot. And I'm getting a little bit behind here, so let's do next some uh, gloves. Uh, uh, on Facebook, Sue, uh, I think it's uh, Thanos, I think it's P-H-A-N-O-S, I think I spelled that, said that correctly there, Sue. You're on Facebook, you've got a set of gloves, and YouTube is Lee Argus, or Angus. Uh, Lee, on YouTube, you've got a set of gloves as well. And one more to look here, just a small one this time. Uh, it's uh, a uh, rally wear, so it's the one they rally wear. These couple I got a little while ago, um, uh, go around your neck, keep the, the sun off you. Uh, uh, on Facebook, uh, Whitney White, congratulations, one of those coming your way. And on YouTube, Doug Moody, you've also scored one. Guys, if you're winning something in the feed there, just let Corey know. There's lots and lots of prizes going out tonight. If you let Corey know, he'll be able to um, uh, get your details and get it out to you. So, that now brings me up to this week's viewer question. And if this time it comes from Damien who asks, I'm really interested in where I can, in, to know where I can find the song and artist you play as the intro song on Wednesday live show. Uh, thanks in advance. Well, look, hi, Damien. The, the song is part of an album that I co-produced with Cliff and Betty. Um, it was called The Modern Day Prospector. We got together to make the album as part of the 150th anniversary or celebrations of uh, discovery of gold in uh, Bendigo. Um, it had about 12 tunes uh, on it, all to do with gold. Now, unfortunately, it sold out many years ago, but I do have some plans possibly to re-release the tunes for download for private use at some stage. Uh, I haven't quite got my head around how we'll do all of that, um, but it's something been in the back of my mind for a little while when I've got a bit of spare time. So I may be able to do something like that there. Um, there was, uh, this was the uh, cover of the album. Uh, it's got my father on there in the middle and then uh, Cliff and Betty uh, there as well. Uh, and we hired a music studio down in uh, uh, Castle Maine and we actually had the detector uh, in there um, putting that all together in a music studio and lots of different music and things and had tracks such as Bendigo Gold, Digger's Dreams and The Ghost of an Old Prospector. So I hope that helps a little bit. Um, there's not, not many of them are left around but if you uh, wanted to uh, see if we can get something done for you send a, a message through to Corey and we'll try and see what we can find out any more for you at the moment there. So I hope that helped. Now look, here's, a little, here's just a, a little one of uh, the tunes uh, that came and this is uh, from the album. It's called Ghost of an Old Prospector. I'm the ghost of an old prospector Before the days of the detector I was here and seen it happen Back in 1851 Now I'm just a ghostly vision For my spirit it has risen And now I roam around the gold fields And I have a little fun 
Oh, there's been a lot of stories of old miners in their glory Picking up big nuggets and drinking heaps of grog With my shirt and trousers threadbare I tell you, mate, I've been there I made a fortune, but it vanished like a disappearing fog For oh, I was wild and reckless In fact, I didn't care less I'd make it in a week But then I'd spend it in a day For it seemed it never would end Gold and grog were always my friends I was the wayward son you hear of Who always goes astray So I finished up a pauper With no wife or sons or daughters they found me in the park one day when the winter chill set in Though my life on earth had ended and my mining days suspended I've stayed here on the gold fields in a form ghostly and thin So if you camp out in the bushland you hear the rattle of a gold pan You just might see me drifting through the ironbarks on the ridge and if I'm feeling hot and thirsty, or it's getting near me birthday, you'd better keep a close watch on the tinnies in your fridge. Cause I'm the ghost of an old prospector, before the days of the detector. I was here and seen it happen, back in 1851. And if your gold is disappearing, or strange noises you've been hearing, I've just paid you a visit And I've had a little fun I might just pay you a visit And I'll have a little fun Okay, well, look, that was uh, the question we had in this week. Um, uh, thanks again for throwing that question in there, uh, Damien. It's much appreciated. If you've got a question you'd like it answered on the show by me, please drop uh, drop it into the feed and uh, Corey will pull them out for me or go on to our regular Saturday morning post uh, on Facebook and drop it in there so that it uh, gives me a bit of time just to make sure I give you the correct information uh, when we do it there. So that's uh, this week's, uh, that's this week's, well, your questions. Thanks again. And now we're going to go and have a bit of a look here uh, at this week's gold hotspot and we'll take a look at Adelong in the Snowy Mountains in New South Wales. The small town of Adelong is in the Snowy Mountains region of New South Wales, approximately 160 kilometres west of Canberra. Originally settled in the 1840s, Adelong was barely a small village when gold was discovered along the local creek in the early 1850s, bringing thousands of diggers to the town to make their fortune. By 1859 a number of gold reefs were being mined, including the Old Reef and the Great Victoria Mine, and the town of Adelong had swelled to 20,000 people, of which approximately 3,000 were Chinese. The lure of gold also attracted prospectors from all over the world. With so many Cornishmen moving to the area, a section of Adelong became known as Cornish Town. Through the 1860s and 1870s the town boomed, with mines and batteries opening up along the valley. William Williams, a prominent town pioneer and discoverer of gold on Mount Charcoal, made a fortune with legend having that he brought a claim for £40,000 and on the same day sold it on for £75,000. Over 25 tonnes of gold was mined in Adelong from 1857 to the close of the last mines in 1914. Today you can take a walk to the Adelong Falls where you can see relics of the old gold mines and get a sense of the large gold mining operations that once took place there. You're also welcome to try your luck at gold panning along the Adelong Creek and you can check out Doug Stone's medal detecting for gold in Australia book or his Gold Atlas of New South Wales for more information on where to prospect in the area.
Okay, well, that's uh, another gold hotspot there in the, the Snowy Mountains country in New South Wales. Uh, haven't visited there, but uh, from heading up that way, it's probably well worth having a bit of a look there. Now, I've got a few more prizes to give away here. Um, what have we got? Let's start with this one. This is the uh, uh, Fines uh, pouch. This is the uh, Upgrade Fines pouch. It's uh, slightly better than uh, uh, the uh, standard one. On Facebook, uh, Terry Hogan. Congratulations, Terry. You've scored one of those. On YouTube, it's uh, Cookie monster 88 you've also got yourself a fines pouch there let the guys in Corey know in the feed and we will get that out to you a couple more sand scoops to go here so um uh Targan Tar Tar Brown Targan Brown on Facebook you've scored one of our sand scoops here I'll get it over that side and on YouTube Susan Van Weagle I think I've sold right there Susan on YouTube congratulations a sand scoop for you also and one more to go here this is the uh, Coiltech uh, gift bags now I think there's got a bit of stuff in this one as well from Coiltech uh, let's have a bit of a look there it's inside, yeah, it's got a Coiltech stubby holder in there and there's a coffee mug, a key ring and a sticker in there as well. So a couple of those uh, on Facebook. Congratulations, Amanda Woods, you scored one of those. And on YouTube, the Gold Rush Guy, you're in luck, you've got one of those. So look, guys, if I'll chuck all that under there. Uh, if you've got uh, a prize or anything like that there, Please, please let uh, Corey know uh, we had truckloads happening again tonight. And I'd like to congratulate all of these evening's uh, live viewing winners. Uh, well done. But do let Corey know the details because we don't get your details. We're not going to know where to send your uh, prizes to. So that is uh, getting us uh, near the end of uh, tonight's uh, show. Um, well, we've got another smashing episode coming up next week uh, uh, in the lineup. We're going to head back uh, to the bush with another Detecting with Dave segment. The Coffee Bush Kid is going to pop in with another top tip. We speak to the lucky winner of the Wedderburn uh, token hunt uh, on the show and we're going to catch all the happenings around the gold fields in uh, prospecting and treasure hunting news. I'm Gold Digger Dave from Miner's Den. Thanks for watching the Mine Lab Show. Thanks for watching. Remember, like, subscribe and share. Tune in next week for another episode of The Mind Lab Show.